Welcome to the Interactive Google Slides presentation. My name is Heather Hall. I'm a Ball State alumni. I currently teach at Elkhart Community Schools. I am an Apple certified teacher and I've presented at EdTech in the Bend in 2019. Today I'm going to in introduce to you how Google Slides can be used as more than a presentation tool. If this pandemic has taught me nothing else, it has taught me how to be creative with my technology. My classroom uses iPads and my students have those iPads when they're at home learning. My current situation is a hybrid situation where I have half my class in the classroom and half my class at home. We are living in a world of hybrid and virtual learning where we must rely on our technology to piece together our unit plans. Some of us are learning synchronous while others are asynchronous. The tips and tricks that I plan to share with you today are great for all types of learners and all learners. So let's get started. Google Slides are meant for presentations. Not anymore. We're gonna be using them to create class manipulatives and interactive worksheets, and you can even use them for a collage. What fun can we have with Google Slides? Let's go. First, I wanna show you how inserting sound bites and highlighting key text can help emerging readers. For example, color. The element of art produced when light striking an object is reflected back to the eye. Let me show you how I did that. So, first I made my audio file. Then I take my audio file after it's on my computer, so here I have it made, and I'm going to import it into my Google Drive. So I'm going to drop it in here. Oops, it's not gonna work. I didn't have it saved in the right format. It has to be an MP3. So I'm gonna name it an MP3. Yes, I want the MP3. I'm gonna try it again. Drag it. So now, insert sound is right there. So I'm gonna go back to my slide. I'm gonna click insert audio. And I'm gonna choose my file name. Insert sound. Where did you go? Insert sound. I don't see it. There it is. Insert sound. And I'm going to tell it select. And now it's going to bring in my sound bite. So when I have my sound here, I have this format option that pops up and I can let my students click it if I want people to read it instead, or I can tell to play automatically. I like it to play automatically. That way they don't forget to click it. I can have it loop the audio, I can stop it when the slide changes, or I can hide the icon when I'm presenting, which means it goes away. So it would look like this. Inserting sound bites help emerging readers because it reads to them. You can follow my video again, or you can refer to these notes right here, which are the steps by steps on how I inserted that sound bite. Remember, you can choose for it to be on click or to play automatically, to loop, or to not stop when you slide change. You can also hide the icon when you're presenting. These things right here are how you control that sound bite. Another thing I've been doing with my Google Slides is making interactive worksheets. And when making interactive worksheets, there's no reason to keep the page set up as a traditional Google Slide. So I like to click on page set up and change it to be a different size, like eight and a half by 11 to mimic a worksheet. So I'm gonna show you how I made this interactive worksheet for my students. First, when you're in a Google Slide, you can go to File, and you can tell it Page Set Up. Right here, you're gonna click on Custom, and you're gonna choose whatever size you want your Google Slide to be. You want it to be 10 by 10, so be it. Let it be 10 by 10, and it will make it a, a square for you. If you want it to be eight and a half by 11, Think about it in terms of how big the page will be and apply it and that's how big it will be on their screen. I already have all this created. So first step, make your worksheet. What do you want it to look like? Go ahead and get it made. 
Once it's made, you're going to go to File, Download, PNG. Now I'm going to download this slide right here because right now everything can move and everything can be typed on and edited and I don't want that. I don't want my students to accidentally mess up their notes. So this is a worksheet that I want them to be able to use and go through a presentation that I've created a video of and fill it in because this is for when they're at home learning instead of being in my classroom. So now that I've downloaded the slideshow, I'm going to go into a blank slide to prepare it, open it up, choose background, choose image, browse, and then open up the image. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to insert text boxes where I want my students to type. So, right here, I will use the words type here, and I'm going to make the font red so I can see it easily when I'm grading. And I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste. And I'll place this everywhere I want a student to be able to type. And then that gives me an interactive worksheet. So here's what my worksheet actually looks like. And I made this um, using eight and a half by 11 so that my students fill their iPad screen when they're working. And so when they get this worksheet, they have this slide right here. And then they also have this slide where they have to drag and drop to show me where it would go and fill in the areas. So they're gonna rearrange the photos along with filling in their text for the words that they have to fill in. So that's how I create interactive worksheets. Are you tired of expecting kids to have printers, glue, and scissors? Well, no more. Let me show you how you can create interactive slides. This first interactive slide I wanna share with you is a drag and drop where students can literally drag and drop the environment to create an overlapping landscape. Now I'm gonna show you how I did this. I'm gonna to go to a blank slide and the first thing I need is I need some grass. So I'm gonna come over into Google, I'm gonna get some grass, I'm gonna copy the image, I'm gonna paste it, and it's okay that it doesn't fill the whole frame. We don't want it to. I like how it gets less detailed as it goes back. So I'm gonna crop it so it fits my slide. The red bar lets you know you hit the slide and that's what I'm gonna use there. And then I'm gonna pull in a shape that I'm gonna make the color of the sky because I want them to create the clouds. So I make it a sky color. And then to make that tray for all my items to go in, I'm gonna create another shape over here on the side to hold all those items. And I'm gonna type on this one. And yes, you can double click to type inside of a shape, but I don't want it to type where it wants to. So I'm going to use a text box. I'm telling my students what I want them to do. So drag and drop the items below to create a landscape using overlapping. And I want to make sure that my emerging readers remember what word we're working on. So I'm going to highlight overlapping. And then I'm also going to make the font bigger so that it fills the page as if it was a game or a worksheet. So you now we're art teachers. We always want to think about aesthetics. So right now everything can move. This is where I'm ready to save my background so that it stops moving. So I'm going to go under file, 
I'm going to tell it to download a PNG. And then it downloads it for me. And it will download it whatever it was titled, your presentation, whatever number your download has been. So when I open it up, I have this image of my slide. Now I'm going to come back into my slideshow, insert a blank slide, choose my background, and under choose image, I'm going to choose the image that I just saved. So I'm going to click browse, and I want it to say right there, untitled presentation, and open, and done. And now this is safe. The kids can't move it around, which is great. Now, how did I get these trees to be blank like that? It's a great question. So I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna type in trees. So I already did that. I really like this tree right here. Oh, I don't like that. All those checkers are gonna be hard to make it invisible. Let's use this tree right here. So I'm gonna take it, copy the tree, and now I'm, because I'm Apple, I'm gonna use Keynote to throw my picture in. So I'm going to paste my tree, and then I'm going to instant alpha around the tree to make it invisible. I think I got it all. Yep, so I can check it there. There's still some white, so instant alpha. And you can also, I've provided in this presentation some extra links in case you don't have an Apple product uh, to be able to make those invisible backgrounds. So now I copy and paste back into my Google slide. And I have my tree. And I'm going to do that for all the elements that I want the student to be able to interact with. And I can copy and paste it as many times as I want them to be able to use it. And then I like to have fun and layer them all up so they can't see them. Um, so that's how I created my interactive manipulative space slide. Now that you've seen how I made my interactive worksheet, here's a step-by-step -step in case you would rather to see it written out. Now, how I made that transparent background, you can use Pages or Keynote like I did using Instant Alpha, or you can use Capwing or Remove.bg. These are two websites that allow you to remove the background for free. Now, I included for you my Element of Color interactive Google Slides. Have fun interacting with Google Slides in a way you've never done before. I hope you enjoy your 2020-2021 school year, even though we are virtual and hybrid.